happened is the organ is going to begin to hit the highest key in that key. You hear that? Press that pedal down. That's it right there. All right. Woo! That sounds a little better already. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, everybody, say Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh no! Stop! 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 Did y'all come to have church? Or did you come to look pretty? Listen, I got my stuff on too. Don't be starting with me today. You got your pastels on and you look all royal in your purple. But listen, we come to give him praise today. Just do, do the pastor a favor. Just for 60 seconds, say it like you mean it. Say it like when you walk out of these doors, he's going to be standing right there. And he gonna take, he's going to take you back to heaven with him. Okay, come on, let's try this again. Let's try it again. Come on, come on. Come on, Rashawn. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Come on, bass player. That's it. Hold on, we got to wait for the organ. We Hold on, we got to wait for the organ. Come on, organ player. Nice and high. There you go. Okay, now, everybody, you have to say Jesus now. You ready? Jesus. Jesus, 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 stop, stop, stop means stop. I want you to give yourselves a hand. Oh, you sounded so good. You come on, take your seats. You sounded so good. You sounded so good in Jesus name listen this is what I came for today I put my duds on today to come and praise him I put my shouting shoes on those are the ones with the slippery bottoms that's so you can slide across the floor and praise the Lord in the dance some of you wore your rubber sole shoes I'm sorry for you Ooh, but his mercy endures forever oh my god so I don't have my my, my wireless mic today my head handheld hit wireless mic and so I'm only preaching with one arm today All right. I'm not used to that so if I go like this just imagine my other arm swinging too <laughs> amen God is so good his mercy endures forever can you give him one more hand for resurrection Sunday oh my God resurrection Sunday I'm so glad to see every beautiful family in this building today yes. because the Lord you know don't you wish this was every Sunday where your whole family was in church with you, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, your friends, your neighbors, everybody was in church with you. I want to give God honor for all who are in the presence of the Lord. I especially want to give God honor for every friend of Harvest today and every guest. If you're joining us online, I want to give you honor. Amen. Maybe this is your first time watching. Welcome to Harvest Church of Hampton. Yes. But we especially do honor those of you who are here today and you're not a member of Harvest. It, it's not a concern to me whether you are a first time guest or you are a repeat guest. I'm going to ask that you would do me a favor because we want to bring some life to you today. If you are not a member of Harvest Church of Hampton, I'm going to ask that you would stand. Just stand. It's only going to take a second. Just stand. You won't have to say anything. Some of you are not sure whether you're a member or not. I hear you. I see you. I know. Hold on. Wait. There's, uh, there's still some more people that need to stand. You know you're not a member. That's okay. Just stand. Just stand. You're about to get blessed. You're about to get blessed. That's it. You're about to get blessed. You're about to get blessed. Now, now Harvest, what I want you to do is I want you to praise God as if your own family member just got saved. I want you to bless the name of the Lord as if Jesus just showed up. Come on, thank God for every gift. Come on, thank God for every visitor. Come on, thank God for every friend. Aren't you glad about it today? God is so good. I'm so glad about it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm so glad about it. And, and we are sincere about that thing, aren't we? Oh, Lord, I hope you felt it when you walked into the building. 
Amen. I hope you felt it when you walked into the building. I want to thank the Lord for our worship team. Can you give God a hand for our worship team? Yes. Amen. They pulled out some new things on me today. They pulled out some newness on me today, but they worked that thing out. Amen. They sounded so good. So thank God for our worship team. Uh, today, I want to I want to get into this word. Um, but I do, I really do uh, am, am pleased to see all of the guests and friends. Amen. Uh, I met a, met a young lady. Uh, it's not her first time, but she changed on me. Her name is Courtney. want to welcome Courtney back. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Don't worry. You don't have to worry about who she is. Just, yeah. We're just glad to have her. Amen. And then uh, I think Kaylee, Kaylee told me she, she's visiting today for the first time. Amen. She brought her children. Isn't that nice? Bring your children to the house of God. Praise God. I'm so glad to see our neighbors. We have some neighbors here today. And his name is James. And I can't remember his wife's first name, but I want to thank God for James being in the house today. Can you give him a hand? And his wife. Amen. Praise God. I'm so glad to see our, our uh, church family, the the. Um, I was going to say the Nelsons, but it's really, <laughs> it's Victoria and brother uh, uh, Joseph. Lord Jesus, I was going to call you Lee. I'm like, that is not Lee. That is, that's his dad. Um, but we want to thank God for Joseph and Victoria. Amen. Being back in the house of God today. Praise God. They are um, children of the house. All right. So are you ready to get into the word of God today? This is going to be a blessing today. Let's, uh, let's, let's go to the book of Luke, the 24th chapter. Luke, the 24th chapter. There are many texts that I could have come from today. I had to choose one. And this particular text is in the 24th chapter of Luke. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. And I'm going to ask that you would stand for the reading of the word of God. If you are able... Please stand for the reading of God's word. And the Bible says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. They entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. I want to speak to you today from the subject, an internal an eternal exit. An eternal exit. I'm going to ask that you would bow your heads with me as we go before the Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name today on this, your Resurrection Sunday. We celebrate the death, the burial, the resurrection and the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you honor for the work that you're going to do in the lives that you're going to save. In the name of Jesus, let the church say amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Many of you may already know that this particular week is referred to by the church as Holy Week. The blessing is that runs across all traditions and backgrounds. The, the Lutherans call it that, the Catholics call it that, the Baptists call it that, the Methodists call it that. So this is known as Holy Week and it speaks to Jesus's passion. When you read in the Bible about Jesus's passion, his passion refers to the events surrounding his crucifixion, amen. Some of you may remember that there was a movie uh, made by Mel Gibson years ago called The Passion of Christ. I encourage you to go and watch that movie for its accuracy. Amen. I want to also tell you that quite a few things happened over a period of approximately seven days, and we're not covering all of those things today. Say thank you, Jesus. Amen. And in fact, uh, this past week on our men's prayer call, which I encourage every 
brother in this church to, to join. This week on our men's prayer call, one of the brothers who is a professor was teaching on Holy Week every day, Monday through Friday, and we didn't get through everything. So that lets you know quite a few things happen in this particular session. So what we're going to do today is I just, I just want to talk to you a little bit about Jesus. Is that okay? Okay. Because last week, Pastor Yasmin, she ministered. By the way, Pastor Yasmin is the first lady of the church, and she's also my beautiful wife of 27 years. Come on, say amen. She preached last week. Oh, she preached that thing. She, 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 she preached that thing. And I don't know how she did it, but she did it in like 22 minutes. I know y'all were so blessed. Amen. Amen. And she preached that thing. And then she told us that the king is coming. Let me say this today. If you don't get anything today, just remember that the king is coming. Somebody say the king is coming. I'm telling you, he's coming. He, he is coming. He is coming. So it, it's Resurrection Sunday. So we want to talk a little bit more about that. So we're going to talk about an eternal exit. So let me give you the first point. If you're writing this down, I want to encourage you that every Sunday when you come to church, you should take notes. And the reason you want to do this is because you're going to need to take your Sunday into Monday. And it's hard to take your Sunday into Monday if you don't have a photographic memory. And most of us don't have a photographic memory. So point number one today is an imperfect package. An imperfect package. Last week we learned about Jesus entering Jerusalem to announce himself as Messiah, right? And, and this particular account is known by theologians as the triumphant entry, the triumphant entry. And there are a couple of things during this entry and during this account that I think are going to bless you. I'm going to read from Matthew 21 and verse 5, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says... Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you. Does that sound familiar? Behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, now let me just say this. What the spirit of God impressed upon me about this particular passage was not the fact that Jesus rode into Jerusalem, but rather it was the way Jesus rode into Jerusalem. How many of you know the, 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 the way you come in really does make a difference? First impressions make lasting impressions, amen? That's why we encourage our young people that when you go places, dress like you need a job. See, not enough of you said amen. How many of you know you're always filling out your resume every day? At Walmart, you're filling out your resume. At, at Target, you're filling out your resume. Down the street and around the corner, you're filling out your resume. Your next employer could be standing in line in front of you. I just, I just helped somebody, but you may not have wanted that one. And so the, the, the Bible says that one of the things in this particular account that's very interesting as Jesus rides into Jerusalem is that Jesus rides in on a donkey instead of a horse. See, the reason this particular point is so important is that you have to understand that for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, the Jews were looking for a Messiah to come back as a king. And because they were looking for a Messiah to come back as a king, they knew all of the scriptures of prophecy that said Messiah will come. Messiah will come. Not only did it say he would come, it told them which gate he would come through. It said he's not coming through the west gate. He's not coming through the south gate. It said, but he's coming through the east gate, the east gate. They were looking for a king to come, but they knew the scriptures about the Messiah, but they forgot one. You ever forgotten anything God ever told you? 
And we're, we're complaining and, and trying to figure out what's going on in our life and how come this isn't working out right? How come that's not working out right? And Lord, you're testing my patience. And the Spirit says to you, don't you remember four months ago you asked for patience? Don't you remember three months ago you asked me to make a change? So the, the Jews forgot one scripture. They forgot Zechariah 9 and 9, which says, I'm going to read from the New King James Version. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Here it is. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. Then it says, lowly and riding on a donkey a colt the foal of a donkey now doesn't that sound an awful lot like Matthew from the book of Matthew see the Jew sometimes we forget what God has told us so he's got to remind you what he said the first time you see the Jews knew that according to scripture the Messiah would be a great king Zacharias said he would be a great king but the problem was they were looking for a conqueror they were looking for a deliverer they were looking for a ruler they were looking for an earthly king and so in other words they missed Jesus because he wasn't packaged the way they thought he should be you see what I'm saying? It, it, they, they missed Jesus because he was imperfectly packaged. That's what they did. But you need to know that God has always used imperfectly packaged people to fulfill his purpose. Oh, right there. You should have shouted because you're looking mighty imperfectly packaged. Some of us don't come from the right side of the street. Some of us don't come from the right side of the railroad track. Some of us don't have the money. Maybe you, some other people we know have. I want to tell you, we're a bunch of imperfectly packaged people. Oh, my God. But God has always used them. He's always used people like this. He used a man named Abraham. And you've got to know Abraham was an idolater. He didn't look like the father of faith. Moses, Moses was an Egyptian prince. He didn't look like a deliverer. He was dressed in Egyptian regalia. And then you had a woman, my daughter loves this sister, you, you had a woman named Rahab. She was a promiscuous prostitute. Oh, she didn't look like a savior. But she was. Oh, you got to read your Bible, you got to read. Then you had a man named David. Just a little shy shepherd boy sitting in a field. He didn't look like a king. Then you had a man named Peter. Now y'all know Peter. <laughs> Peter was a foul mouth fisherman. He didn't look like a rock. Oh, come on somebody. Then you had a man named John the Baptist. He was just a local locust lay preacher. He didn't look like a voice crying in anybody's wilderness. I want to tell you, Paul come along, and he was a reformed murderer. He didn't look like the apostle to the Gentiles, and then you came along. Some of us were liars. Some of us were thieves. Some of us were murderers. Some of us were adulterers. Some of us were fornicators. You didn't look like who you are today. Don't get new on God today. No, ma'am. No, sir. God has always used imperfectly packaged people to fulfill his purpose. Oh, Lord, I want to. Somebody lift your right hand and say, Lord, thank you. Say, Lord, I'm not perfect, but you put it together. Yes. How many of you know sometimes God has sent us blessings, but because the blessing wasn't packaged the way you thought it should be packaged, you missed it. Some of us are blind to the blessing. We're blind to the answer of prayer. Not only are some of us blind to the blessing, we reject the blessing. Isn't that what Israel did? We reject the blessing. We don't want anything to do with the blessing. I'm wondering how many of us have ever rejected God's blessing or God's answer to prayer simply because it was imperfectly packaged. Mm-mm-mm. 
Jesus said in his word, he said, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you and you have not lamented. He said, you, anybody that's got an ear to hear, let him hear. He says, you, you've got eyes, but you can't see. They were blind to the blessing because it was imperfectly what? Imperfectly packaged. Listen, I've got to move on. I've got to move on. But let me tell you, Jesus he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. But what you have to know is donkeys were reserved for servants. And horses were reserved for kings. Kings rode horses into battle. Kings mounted horses because horses signified a symbol of power. Kings rode horses because horses symbolize war. But Jesus, somebody say, but Jesus. Where are my audio people? But Jesus, he rode a donkey. And when he rode this donkey, see, what you need to know about a donkey is donkeys are considered pack animals. Come on, stay with me, team. Donkeys are considered pack animals. They are animals that are known to, be, to carry heavy loads. They are burden bearers. Come on, somebody. Donkeys are known to be stubborn. They're known to be small. They are not intimidating whatsoever. In other words, donkeys are the epitome of humility. So when Jesus rode in on a donkey, it was a sign that he was coming in peace, not for war. Listen, how many times have people ever come into your life, but you, you took their actions as one thing, but they were really coming for another? You thought they were against you, but they were really for you. You thought they were trying to tear you down, but behind the scenes, they were trying to get you the promotion, not take it from you. Listen, you have to be the type of person who, who thinks that God can do all things through all men, saved and unsaved. Don't you know that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous? Don't you know he can bless you through a donkey? He can make a donkey speak if he wants to. He can do for you any way he wants to do it, but you have to be willing to accept the blessing. Oh, my God, my God. Listen, don't worry if something is imperfectly packaged. Just ask God, is it from him? Let me give you the next point. Let me give you the next point. The thing that I learned as I was reading this account, I learned that as Jesus was doing his triumphant entry, is that there is a difference between Hosanna and hallelujah. There is a difference between Hosanna and hallelujah. Let me read Matthew, the 21st chapter to you, verses 8 and 9. The Bible says, and a very great multitude. This is Jesus. He's sitting on this donkey. And he's about to ride into Jerusalem. And as he begins his trek, it says, and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way so that he could ride upon them. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now what's amazing about this particular account is that as Jesus rode into Jerusalem, all of the people were waving palm branches. As a sign of praise. As he rode into Jerusalem, they were shouting, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. But you see, Jesus knew the difference between Hosanna and hallelujah. See, Jesus knew that in Judaism, and it is true to this day, Hosanna is actually a cry expressing an appeal for divine help. That's what Hosanna is. It's a cry expressing a, an appeal for divine help. In other words, Hosanna is a prayer to God. But hallelujah is a praise to God. 
It's the highest praise you can give him. One is a prayer. The other is a praise. And the Holy Ghost showed me that we must begin to teach people to say Hosanna before we teach people to say hallelujah. You have to teach people to pray before you teach people to praise. See, what you don't understand is there's a whole lot of folks running around the church world worshiping and praising God, but they have yet to learn to pray. It's hard to appreciate unless you have to come behind it. Oh, my God. Somebody say Hosanna and now say hallelujah. Hosanna first. Hallelujah next. Pray first. Praise next. Oh, my God. See, I know this to be true because I know it's true that Hosanna is different from hallelujah because the same people that were shouting and waving palm branches, they were doing that in the honor of Jesus Christ. But those were the same people that the very next day began to shout, crucify him, crucify him. How many of you know people will change on you? In a moment? In a twinkling of an eye? People will change on you. Think it not strange, dear friend. When people change on you, people will change on you. So I want you to be careful who you put your trust in because there will always be shouters in the crowd. There will always be palm wavers in the crowd. There will always be people standing by saying one thing, but meaning another. I don't want you to be confused. The Bible says his words are smoother than butter. But there is war in his heart. That's what my Bible says. But I want to encourage you. Don't become discouraged. And don't become cynical. I'm just telling you that there are some people in the world like this who have some fickle feelings. Somebody lift your right hand and say, Lord, deliver me from fickle feeling folks. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Boy, if we could just get rid of a few folks. They get offended at the drop of a hat. You don't answer a text and all of a sudden you the devil. As if you don't have business. But let me tell you, Tony, you got business. You got things to do, too. Yeah, they're not the only ones going through. Come on, somebody. They're not the only ones trying to work on their marriage. Come on, somebody. I had to tell somebody the other day. I, they said, hey, can we do such and such? I said, no, that's my date night. But you the pastor. Date night. Listen, I'm not trying to be in the same plight as you. Date night. Date night. Somebody say date night. You need a. Come on, somebody. Wives, look at your husband. Tell him, say, we need a date night. Tell him, say, take me out in Jesus' name. I want to tell you that when we went, when we, when we, when we, I'm stuttering now. When we went on our date night, honey, we didn't go, we didn't go to the Earth, Wind, and Fire concert. We didn't go see Michael Jackson look alike. No, we went to see the chosen. Oh, no, you, you see, you're too spiritual. You, you're not going to see the chosen because the chosen, chosen. Child, take her to see the chosen. It'll put some points in your bucket. Somebody say day, night. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Listen, let me go back. So anyway, let's recap. First of all, Jesus had an eternal entry. He did. He came on in. He had an eternal entry, but he had to deal with some imperfectly packaged, you know, he was imperfectly packaged, so they didn't accept him. And then secondly, Jesus knew that Hosanna was different from hallelujah. But the third point today, if you're writing this down, the third point today is an empty tomb. An empty tomb. Now, I need to fast forward a little bit. I need to fast forward a little bit, and I need to take you to the stage in the story. It's an historical account, not really a story. But I need you to take you to the stage where Jesus has now been arrested. He has been illegally tried at night. 
He has been beaten all night long. He has been mocked. He has been spit upon. He has been humiliated in front of all. Then they declared him guilty and hung him on a cross between two malefactors, criminals. And the Bible says that they hung an accusation on the cross, which was customary when you would crucify someone. And the accusation said, this is the king of the Jews. Somebody say, well, at least they got that right. And then all of Jerusalem was watching as he spoke some of his final words. As Jesus hung there on the cross, he looked out and he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Another passage says that after Jesus experienced what he experienced, he exclaimed, it is finished. Another passage expresses that Jesus lifts up his head and he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And then another passage expresses that he gave up the ghost. You know what that tells me? That tells me that they did not take his life. He gave it freely. Come on, some, you can't take something from somebody that you didn't give them. Oh, my God. Because Jesus said, I came that you might have life. See, Jesus could give life. Come on, somebody. Lazarus found that out. Jairus' daughter found that out. If you go see the chosen, you'll find that out too. Lazarus found that out. Because Lazarus didn't have life. But Jesus gave it back to him. Listen, there was a time in your life where you didn't have life. And Jesus came along and gave it back to you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for abundant life. Thank you for a new life. Thank you for being a new creature in Christ. You've got to learn to be grateful for what God has done for you. You've got to learn to be grateful for how he brought you out. You've got to learn to be grateful for the old life being gone and the new life having come, having pulled off the old man and put on the new man. Now you walk in newness of life. Now you walk with the righteous when you used to walk with the unrighteous. Now you speak with a golden tongue when it used to be foul as the devil. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me from the old life. Come on, somebody say amen. Lord, I want to thank you. I want to I wanna thank you. I want to thank you. But the Bible says that after he gave up the ghost, they buried his lifeless body in the borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. That's a good brother. But I did hear another preacher say one time, he said Joseph didn't have any problem loaning his tomb out because he knew he'd get it back. You know, there are certain things you will do when you believe the word of God. There are certain things you will do when you believe the Messiah is who he says he is. When Martha came out to meet Jesus, after four days of Lazarus being dead, Martha said, had you been here, Lazarus would not have died. Jesus said, well, he's going to live again. She put her head down and said, well, Lord, I know that I'm going to see him again in the resurrection. Oh, but Jesus, he lifted up that woman's chin. He said, I want you to know, not only will you see him in the resurrection, but I am the resurrection. I am the truth and the life. I am the way. He said, I'm the resurrection. He said, you're going to see him again today. Can you imagine? They buried his body in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. And the Bible says that the Jewish religious leaders 
went to the Romans and said, we need you to guard the tomb of Jesus because he claimed that he would rise again after three days and after three nights. Now, here's what I don't understand. I don't understand why you would take action against a man who has given up his life. Why would you even be concerned about somebody who's not breathing anymore? Why would you even let your blood pressure get up if you didn't believe that he was dead and gone? But what that let me know is that those religious leaders, in spite of what they said, they believed the miracles. They believed the healings. They believed Lazarus coming out of that tomb. They believed so much that they said we got to kill Lazarus again so that people don't believe. But they believe. They went to the Romans and said we need you to guard the tomb because he said he would rise again after three days and three nights. But how many of you know that nobody can stop what God has already set in motion for you? Nobody can block what God has already started rolling for you. Nobody can move what God has put in place for you. Nobody can change what God has already decreed for you. I want to tell you if the job is yours, it's yours. What God has for you. Come on, somebody. It is for you. Can't nobody stop God from doing what he wants to do. Can't nobody stop God from blessing you the way he wants to bless you. There was a time when somebody tried to take something away from us that God had given us. They tried real hard, but God said no. I love God because he will be a lawyer in the courtroom. Come on, somebody. See, you got to go through something in order to appreciate the move of God. You got to go through something in order to appreciate the power of God because he can move mountains. Listen, a mountain is not necessarily a physical structure sitting on a hill. The mountain is whatever's stopping you from getting to the other side. Some of you need to get to the some of you need to stretch out and go to the other side and you need God to move a mountain for you Lord I need you to move my way of thinking I need you to move my finances I need you to move my supervisor I need you to move sometimes you just have to remove the stinking thinking some people don't have more than what they have today because of the way they think the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Don't walk around the house constantly saying, well, we, we ain't never going to get ahead. We're never going to get out of this situation. We'll never pay off this debt. Don't stop saying that. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You've got to do like the Pharisees. you got to believe the word even when you say you don't believe it. You say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. He's the lifter up of my head. The cattle on a thousand hills is his. And he'll give me the desires of my heart. You got to learn to write scriptures. Somebody say amen. The Bible says that they put his body in the borrowed tomb. And then three days later, somebody say three days later. And then three days later, Mary and Martha, they rise early in the morning. Let me just say, some blessings only come early in the morning. You got to get out of bed, sister. You've got to get out of bed, brother, and talk to your maker. It says they rose early in the morning and they went down to the tomb. And when they got there, they found that the tombstone had been rolled away. See, what you need to know is the tombstone that they used was purposely so large and heavy that one or two men couldn't move it. 
three or four men couldn't move it. They, they found that the tombstone had been rolled away and they found that Jesus had exited the building. They came looking for the main character and he was gone. Jesus had exited the building. So they ran and told the disciples, John and Peter, they got to booking and they ran down to the tomb. And the Bible says that Peter outran John. And when they got there, they wanted to see for themselves. Sometimes you need to see for your When you get saved, you tell them, say, come to my church and see. So you can hear about a man named Jesus. Some people need to see it in order to believe it. But they probably got to the tomb and said, well, we saw him enter the tomb. But we didn't see him exit. We saw him go in, but we didn't see him go out. Oh, my God. They were so befuddled. There's one of the words, Jada. They were so befuddled. Couldn't figure out what had happened. And they said, well, my God. Mary looked around. She said to the gardener, she said, can you tell us? Where they put the body of my Lord. Can you tell us where they moved Jesus? Can you tell us where my Savior is? And then the Bible says, well, I can imagine the gardener saying, oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell Martha, don't you moan. But that's not what it says. The Bible says that Jesus was the gardener. The Bible says that Jesus called Mary by name. You know what some of us need God to do? Call you by name. When he saved you, he called you by, by name. Jesus calls Mary by name. And he says, Mary. And her eyes came open. This is what I love. When he called her by name and she realized who was calling her name, she exclaimed. She cried out, Rabboni, meaning Lord. She cried out, Rabboni. Listen, some of you need to cry out a little more. Some of you need to say something sometime. Some of you need to call him by his name because he likes to hear his name. You know every father likes to hear his name. And I want to tell you every savior likes to hear his name. Rabboni! Call him by name. The Bible says, who Jesus? Do you know that when, when Jesus actually makes an entrance into your life, and you allow him to help you exit from a life of sin, you too will call him Rabboni. You too will call him Lord. But you got to let him in. Somebody said, let him in. You've got to let him in. Let me show you one last thing. Let me show you so we can pray. So we can pray. My God, the Bible says that there is an eternal testimony that we need to talk about. An eternal testimony. You see, an eternal testimony. <laughs> I love it. You see, when the Roman soldiers who were guarding the tomb reported back to their commander what happened, the Jewish religious leaders paid the soldiers money to say that the disciples had stolen his body. Let, let me read it to you. Matthew, the 28th chapter and the 13th verse. 
They said, say ye. His disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, in other words, if he finds out that you fell asleep on your post and you don't know what happened to Jesus, if this comes to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and we will secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. The Bible says that that same lie that Jesus' disciples stole his body is still being taught and reported to this day. I want to tell you the reason that that's so important. It may seem like a negative thing, but actually it's an eternal testimony because... If it weren't for this occurrence, we might not still be talking about Jesus' eternal exit. If it weren't for this occurrence, we might not still be talking about Jesus' eternal escape. I want to tell you, do you realize that it's over 2,000 years later and we're still talking about the resurrection? It's over 2,000 years later. We're still talking about the tombstone being rolled away. 2,000 years later. And we're still talking about Mary running to the tomb. 2,000 years later. We're still talking about John and Peter getting on the gallop and going. 2,000 years later. We're still talking about an angel sitting at the head and the foot of where Jesus lay. 2,000 years later. And we're still talking about the angel saying he is not here for he is risen as he said. Oh, you got to read it. The Bible says that we're still talking about it to this day. That's what you call an eternal testimony. We're still talking about the death. We're still talking about the burial. We're still talking about the resurrection. And honey, if you read in Acts, you're going to talk about the ascension. You can't talk about the death and burial and resurrection without talking about the ascension. So, so, so I have concluded that in all of our lives, we all have an entry that would be your date of birth. And I have concluded that every one of us has an exit date. And that is TBD. But I came here to admonish you today to live for Jesus in such an impactful way that people will still talk about it hundreds of years later. Live a life so dedicated to the Father that people will testify about it hundreds of years later. You will impact people's lives decades and centuries after you're gone. Do you realize that Billy Graham's life is still impacting people's history? Do you realize that Charles Mason, his life is impacting people's lives today and he's been long gone? You've got to know that Charles Spurgeon lived in the 1800s. His life is impacting people's lives today. E.M. Bounds, who lived back in the 1800s, his life is still impacting people's lives today. Watchman Nee lived in the early 1900s in China. His life is still impacting your life and my life today. We need to ask ourselves, am I living a life so dedicated to Jesus that it will have an eternal testimony? Mm. I want you to stand. I want you to stand. Am I living a life so dedicated to Jesus that it will have an eternal testimony? 
But even as you're standing, I want to tell you that in order for all of us and any of us to do this, there must first be a belief in that which I have preached today. There must first be a belief in the death of Jesus Christ. There must first be a belief in the burial of Jesus Christ because he was buried in a borrowed tomb. There must be a belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how that after three full days and three full nights, the Son of God was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't raise himself. God raised him from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that he ascended back to heaven and Jesus now sits on the right hand of the Father. That's two different people. Come on, somebody. That's why we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. That's what we're really celebrating. You notice I haven't called it Easter all day. Because Easter is a pagan religion. A pagan holiday. This is resurrection what? Sunday. Mm. And because Jesus was raised from the dead. We too can be raised from the dead. Can I tell you that a life separated from God is spiritual death. But we can be raised from spiritual death by the power, the same power that raised Jesus' dead body back to life into an immortal body. It's the same power that can bring us from death into life. If there is anybody today that is standing under the sound of my voice, maybe you're listening online, maybe you're watching today, if today we have not accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, if we have not repented of our sins and asked Jesus to come into our heart, I want to encourage you today that Resurrection Sunday is your time. Today is the day to change the rest of your life. Today. This is a time when you can start your eternal testimony. Because we're all going to exit this earth one day. And we don't know the day or the hour. But what we do know is that Jesus will give you a brand new life. I want everybody to lift your hands. If there is one today, thank you, Jesus, that wants to give their life to this Jesus, to this Savior to this king. You want a brand new start today. I am opening the altar for you. I want to encourage you that even now as I'm speaking, I want you to make a move toward the altar. I want you to begin to step out from behind your seat and begin to make your way to the altar so that we can pray with you, so that we can bless you, so that the spirit of the living God can come in. If there's one that wants to be saved today, why don't you come? Oh, thank you, Jesus. The altar is open. I, I see the, in the spirit there's a battle going on. I want to encourage you. You can defeat the devil today. You can have the victory in the name of Jesus. Don't tell yourself that you're not worthy. Jesus made you worthy. He made you a candidate. Why don't you come today? Maybe you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. You, you started with him, but now you've been away from him. If you need to rededicate your life to Jesus, why don't you come today? Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Saints of the Most High God, just pray. Saints of the Most High God, pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Will there be one? The Spirit is telling me to give someone time. Will there be one today? I know we may be imperfectly packaged. We don't look like the type of person Jesus wanted to save. But you're exactly what he's looking for. You're exactly who he's looking for. And we want to teach you to first say Hosanna. 
before we say hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All together lovely. God, you're wonderful. You're wonderful to us today. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Here I am to worship. Lord, we're here to bow down. Lord, we're here to say, Lord, you're our God. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to pray for you today in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we bless your name today. We thank you for your word today. We thank you that we were imperfectly packaged. Oh, my God. We thank you that you look beyond our faults. That you see every one of our needs. Father, we thank you for forgiveness. And we thank you for salvation. Lord, I'm praying today that even now, Lord, that you would begin to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Begin to save us to the uttermost. If there is one, Lord, that is in this place that is not yet saved, I want you to break up the fallow ground. Soften their heart, Jesus. Open their heart to your life. Save in the name of Jesus. Deliver in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for every soul that's standing in this building. Lord, there are some of us, Lord, that we look like everything is all right but spirit of the living God you know that behind the scenes we need your help if the spirit is saying that right now some of us we've been putting on a, um, a, a putting on a face but we have to do that but the spirit said behind the scenes you've been telling God Lord I need your Lord, I'm praying for those that need your help. I'm praying for those that cannot help themselves. Lord, there are some things that if you do not do them, they cannot be done. Father, I don't know who that is, but Lord, you need God to move a mountain for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, be a mountain mover. For the people of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, be a bridge repairer. He said he is a repairer of the breach. Lord, mend relationships, broken relationships in these families, in the name of Jesus. Lord, even our own Savior had to separate himself for a while from his family but Lord you repaired that breach and you said that at the end of Jesus' ministry all of his family members had given their life to him they all followed him Lord mend these relationships Ooh, I don't know who this is but Lord we want you to fix it my God somebody say Lord fix it because you've tried to fix it but it's not working the spirit said he's going to fix it but you've got to give him room to fix it. You've got to stop interjecting. You've got to stop trying to make it happen. The Spirit says, I will fix it if you allow me to. Lord, we thank you for fixing it. We thank you for changing it. We thank you for moving. Lord, we're also praying for healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, we've got some saints watching online. We've got some saints in the building that are standing in the need of a move of God. Father, I know of some in my mind right now, and I want you to do for them what you did for Lazarus. Their circumstance might look dead. Their, their diagnosis might look like it's not good. But Father, in Jesus' name, you arrived four days what it looked like was late. But you were right on time. Lord, be right on time for some of us today. Heal our bodies. Deliver us from disease. 
And last but not least, Lord, I'm asking for a blessing upon every marriage in this place. Lord, you said that, well, Lord, we know that marriages make the church strong. Marriages make the church strong. And I want you to strengthen every marriage, every relationship. Cause our relationship to be a reflection of your son, Jesus Christ. Cause our relationship to be a reflection of how you feel about your people. Lord, we bless you today. We give you glory today. Lord, we're praying for Bishop Watson. Thank you, Jesus. We're praying for Pop Robinson. Lord, I pray for my daughter Jada. Lord, for miracles and blessings. Father, we're praying for uh, uh, Mother Price, Sister Barbara, who had that surgery. We're praying for Mark Price, who's going into surgery. Father, we're praying for the saints of God, that you would work a miracle. Don't let us think you have not showed up in time. Lord, we bless you. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. In the name of your son, Jesus, let the church say amen. And amen. Can you give God a great big hand? Glory to God. He is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Uh, you may take your seats in the presence of the Lord very quickly. I just want to say that even today, if you're here today and you live in this local area and you do not have a church home and you would like to make Harvest your new church home, you said, this, I believe this is the place God can make me into the workman that he's calling me to be. I want to ask that you would join us in the welcome lounge immediately after service. If you'd like to join Harvest today, join us in the welcome lounge. We've got some information we want to share with you. We want to greet you and invite you and welcome you in in the name of Jesus. But I believe today that even today there's somebody that wants to make Harvest their new church home. And if you're here today and you would simply like more information about the church, you want to find out a little bit more about what we believe, whatever it may be, I want you to join us in the Welcome Lounge as well. Amen? If you're looking for a church home, we're looking for you as a member. Because this is a family. And we will love you all the way to heaven. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God a great big hand. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Do not think that I have any additional announcements at this time, Pastor Yaz. Am I missing anything? Amen. I want you, if you, I want you to enjoy your Resurrection Sunday. Today is this morning is a good start, but I want you to enjoy your family today. I want you to, if they're not local, I want you to call your loved ones. I want you to tell them that you love them because you never know when the last time is you'll be able to speak to someone. So I want you to make sure you call them. Tell them that you love him and enjoy your family today in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's stand. Amen. I want you to sing this little closing song with us. We, again, we're so glad to have every guest today, every person who is yet to join Harvest or if you're here from out of town. Thank you so much for fellowshipping with us. I'm always so blessed by the Reeves family and the Watson family. Amen. But come on, sing this little song with us. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Unto the Lord, unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Yes, He is good. For He is worthy. Yes, 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 he is worthy.